Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. So this week on Game of Thrones, we got some big callbacks to Bravos, including Sirio Pharrell's fate. And we got to see Sansa in the Vale, which was a huge deal. But I really feel like all the energy was at Craster's. Real quick shout out, if you're finding me for the first time, I just do weekly Game of Thrones videos for each episode and a whole bunch of bonus videos. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I even do a weekly giveaway that starts in this video right now. All you have to do to participate is be a subscriber and leave a comment. So because I'm also getting ready to hit 200,000 subscribers, I'm doubling it too. But I'll talk about that after my review. Careful for spoilers from the episode if you haven't seen it yet, but here are my top five moments. Number five. Lysa and Littlefinger. In case you don't remember from season one, she is Looney Tunes crazy. Mostly crazy for Littlefinger. It's kind of tragic how much she's taken advantage of her lifelong obsession with him, but here are the Cliff's notes on their historic love triangle with Catelyn Stark. Littlefinger always loved Catelyn as a boy, but Catelyn, like most teenagers, was not always into him. But on the side, Lysa started to become obsessed with Littlefinger. Because Littlefinger couldn't have Catelyn, he took Lysa as a consolation prize and, you know, basically took her virginity, only making her obsession worse. But she was forced to marry a much, much, much older John Aaron who ruled the Eyrie. John Aaron ended up discovering Joffrey was a bastard pre-season one, but Littlefinger, who was working a long con at the time, used Lysa's obsession to get her to poison John Aaron, her husband, and send that letter to Catelyn to make her think that the Lannisters were responsible which was part of the reason why Catelyn took Tyrion to the Vale to be executed in season one. So as you can see, everything is connected. It gets really, really complicated, but when she says little things like, you know, dropping poison into Jon Arryn's goblet, it's a huge deal. That was really only half of the things that happened in the Vale this episode. We can unpack the freaking hilarious sex screaming down in the comments, but the big takeaway from Sansa this week is that Lysa looks like she could flip out at any moment and just try to do something awful. So keep your eyes peeled on Lysa, she is a loaded gun, but her son Robin is just as crazy as Joffrey, just in the opposite direction. You know, he's just crazy at the opposite end of the spectrum. Who else felt really, really bad for Sansa whenever he just farted the red wedding out of his mouth? Number four, you cannot run from the Iron Bank. This may not have seemed like a big deal at the time, but I think this Iron Bank plot will become much, much bigger in the next couple of episodes. How surprised were you when Tywin said that all their gold mines had been exhausted? They're still rich, but there's no new money coming in. All those wars he funded and the money he lent to Robert took a huge chunk of their wealth. So that's why they need the Tyrells. They're basically the only other super wealthy family in Westeros right now. Mark Gatiss is actually playing someone who works for the Iron Bank of Bravos, but we don't know which episode he's going to debut in or how big his part's going to be. But it was just one of the first big callouts to Bravos in the episode, which I thought was really awesome. Number three, Daenerys does what queens do. I like the casual way that Dario talked about taking the Marines' fleet of ships. He made it sound like they just pinched him. It's basically enough to carry the force they have right now to Westeros, so technically if they wanted to, they could probably take the Iron Throne and enough people would flock to her banner to help them subdue the rest of Westeros. They really wanted it to feel like Daenerys could go either way, but in doing so, you know, all of her good work freeing the slaves would be undone. So she's sticking around in Marine for the long haul to just try and take care of Slaver's Bay, but Old enemies and a couple new ones are cropping up. They name drop Cleon, a former slave who's taken over Astapor. He's going to be important in the future, probably. I don't know if they cast the role, but remember his name. Back in Yunkai, the Wise Masters have taken back power, so they're also going to be a group Daenerys will have to face again. We did not see the dragons this week, but because there are a couple of scenes in the trailers of Daenerys in her throne room we haven't seen yet, I expect there to be some dragon related scenes in the next couple of episodes. Number two, Brienne and Podrick are the anti-hound in Arya. Yes, it is a bummer that Jaime is not with Brienne, but I love the comedy that they brought to the episode. When the whole world is burning or freezing around you, it's just nice to get a little bit of relief. So she's slowly warming up to him, but it was really when she learned about Pod saving Tyrion during the Battle of Blackwater that really sealed the deal. I also feel like this foreshadowed Pod maybe saving Brienne at some point this season, so hopefully we'll get that payoff. He's not super a cooking rabbits, but he is there when you really need him. I also love the way they visually connected Pod talking about running his spear through the back of that guy's skull with Jon Snow killing Carl. And my number one WTF moment, no surprise here, Jon Snow versus Carl. We are gonna miss you, Burn Gorman. You were an amazing villain on Game of Thrones. In case you were wondering, he died inside Craster's Keep and because they lit it on fire, I think he burned too. So he will not come back as a white. They really took the sword play to the next level in this episode. You know, we also we got Arya's water dancing in another scene, but Jon versus Carl was just a great fight scene. We don't get a lot of scenes that are that crazy. 
I feel like David and Dan did a really good job developing Carl as a villain, so that this final fight really did feel like a high point of the episode. That shot of John's sword, though, that will go down as one of the all-time best killing blows on the show. Not quite as big as Ned Stark's beheading, grant you, but definitely top five. But now it's your turn. Let me know, what was your favorite moment? You know, was it John versus Carl? Was it Sansa and the Eerie? Or was it Arya and the Hound? But there are a couple really big moments that we need to pay attention to, but that didn't necessarily make my top five. So here they are in no particular order. First off, Arya is water dancing again, and she let the Hound know that he is on her list of people to kill. I was so happy that Needle could not penetrate his armor. I just love all their scenes together, so I do not want him to go away anytime soon. They're like the anti-Pod and Brienne, or Pod and Brienne are like the anti Aryan Hound, however you want to think about it. Let's actually just call them Team Fuck the King. In case you missed it too, that other big call out to Bravos was in the form of the Hound talking about Sirio's fate. It was a big call out to the fandom because everyone always wonders, you know, did he die, did he not die? The Hound thought the idea that Marin Trant could kill him was ridiculous. He basically made it seem like Marin Trant could not kill himself with his own blade if he tried. So if you believe him, that means that Sirio is still alive somewhere out there. In reality, George R. R. Martin never revealed Sirio's fate and he still hasn't. In every interview I've ever seen, anytime anyone ever asks him, he refuses to say whether Sirio is alive or dead or confirm it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, is Sirio alive or is he dead? Then we have to follow up with Bran. It looks like he's back on track to find that giant weirwood from their visions. Poor Hodor too. Did you see the look on his face when he realized he killed Locke? But the real major name drop in the episode I felt like was the Sand Snakes. Oberyn talked about his eight daughters. I know a lot of you have been asking me whether or not we'll see any of them this season, but based on the pacing of the episodes and the story, and given the fact that we're halfway done with the season, I don't think the show is going to bring them on until season five at the earliest. If there's any other really important things that you saw in the episode that I didn't include in my video, be sure to write it below in the comments. But overall, I give the episode a solid A-. They did an amazing job of paying off this Carl plot, even though Carl really wasn't in that many scenes this season. I think Burn Gorman just really nailed evil. I hope he plays some more villains in the future. He looked like he had so much fun playing the part. Then from a visual standpoint, the way they revealed the veil and the eerie was just breathtaking. You go from the bloody gates, this horrible claustrophobic kill box, to that panoramic CG shot of the castle at the top of the mountain. It was just like Daenerys scanning the landscape of Marine earlier this season. The idea is, is that Sansa is supposed to be safe from all the armies there, but because of Crazy Pants Lysa and Robin, she's probably in just as much danger as she was back at King's Landing. From an emotional standpoint, the only thing that really didn't land with me in the episode was where Bran had to decide to turn away from Jon. I think it's just because I've read the books, and in the books, that scene never happened, so it was a little surreal for me, this whole Craster subplot. Jon's reunion with Summer, though, was just so awesome. That really did touch me, but probably just because I'm a big dog person. I've had Labrador Retrievers my whole life, so I know what it's like to love a big animal like Summer. Really, I didn't expect the episode to try and top that big White Walker scene from last week, but the Craster subplot felt like it almost got there. I kind of feel like that whole Mira subplot was telegraphing Carl dying a horrible death. You know, it's like, you're a horrible person, so you're going to die a horrible death, even though that doesn't always happen on the show. The fact that John ended up doing it Podrick style was just icing on the cake. Get him in the back of the skull. So let me know if you have any other lasting questions about the episode. Like usual, my Q&A will post tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get it. And again, because I'm getting ready to hit 200,000 subscribers, and I just want to say thank you to you guys for being so amazing. You're so awesome. I'm doubling the giveaway. I'm giving away two gift cards. So based on the teaser, it looks like we're going to see Tyrion's trial. So I think next week is going to be really exciting. I can't wait to see the trial play out. So right now, click here to get that Q&A video, uh, the annotation as soon as I post it. And click here to learn more about the last great war with the White Walkers and the building of the wall. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives. Everybody go hug a dog if they have a dog right now. Just go give them a hug.